crucified wrong. You had to hold her down, didn't you? Yeah. All right. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to look at 9 through 12 instead of 10. We'll read the next verse. Title message, A State of Delusion. 2 Thessalonians 2, beginning with verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception from those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Right. A state of delusion. One of the things I do every time I read this book, I open it up and I pray, Lord, make this book relevant Amen. to my life. Make it relevant to the world that I live in and help me make it relevant to those I speak to. This book is still relevant. It's still just as relevant today as the day in which it was written. Our nation, along with the world that we live in, I would suggest to you this morning, delusional. is becoming more delusional with each passing day. That's true. Paul uses this phrase, a strong delusion. A strong delusion. Make no mistake about it, folks. The spiritual world is as real as anything. We are surrounded by forces of darkness. And these forces of darkness are creating delusion in the minds of unbelievers. Someone came to me this morning. They said, Preacher, in last week's service, as you were doing communion, <coughs> The individual said, I looked over at that door and there stood a dark figure. And that dark figure stood there and watched you throughout the meeting. Watched you get up in the pulpit and began to speak. And when you got to a certain point in your sermon, that dark figure walked across the floor and walked straight through that door. Darkness is very real, folks. But I want to say this to you. Darkness cannot stay where light exists. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The devil will try to get into your house. The devil will try to get into your family. The devil will try to get into your life. But if you have Jesus, he's got to go. Amen. Amen. But to those who are unbelievers, that dark figure is creating more and more delusion in their minds to the extent that they have become and are becoming more and more delusional. That's what's wrong with our world today, folks. That's what's wrong with this nation today. And so we consider that phrase 
a strong delusion. One of the Greek dictionaries defining delusion says it's used regarding those who are led astray and roaming. It's a mental strain. A wrong opinion. Ooh, do we have a lot of wrong opinions <laughs> in our nation? Everybody's got an opinion today. I'll tell you what, if that opinion don't agree with this book, you need to get a new one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. A wrong opinion. Error in morals of religion. Listen, we've got more religion than we know what to do with today. And much of the religion in our day is filled with that dark creature that showed up last week. Religion, error, deceit. Webster defines delusion as an abnormal mental state characterized by the occurrence of delusion, a persistent, false, get this, psychotic belief regarding the self or persons or objects outside of self. Is it any wonder we have a psychotic problem in our nation? There you have a description of the nation you and I live in. It is psychotic, folks. Every aspect of our society is becoming increasingly delusional. Sadly, even much of the professed Christianity in our nation has become delusional. That dark figure is running much of it. They've been captivated by the lies of the devil, by the lies of darkness. Listen. For 37 years, I have now watched this nation sinking deeper and deeper, ever so slowly, into a delusional state. Amen. It's been ever so slow. It's like the day I woke up and realized that I weighed 260 pounds. But you see it happens so slow that you don't see it happening. It's like that proverbial frog that you get water out of the lake and you put it in the pot on the stove and you put that frog in it and as far as he's concerned he's in his natural habitat but you turn that stove on and that water slowly heats up. Out. And that frog boils in it, never knowing that he's being cooked. That's what's happened in our nation. America has produced a people who today are being defined as progressives. I'm going to get in trouble now, that's okay. We produced a people who are now defined as progressives. And these people are convinced that they know what's best for you, they know what's best for me, they know what's best for the nation, and by whatever means they're going to bring it back. Anything, anything that interferes with their progressive determination, with their progressive opinions and ideas today is immediately met with a smear campaign and ever increasing even acts of violence against people who don't agree with them. And what they define as 
being progressive. You see, there are these evolutionists who believe that man's getting better and better. That he's progressing towards creating his own utopia. They're deluded, folks. They are delusional. And what they believe to be progression in their own self-righteousness, what they believe is actually abhorrent to what the Word of God says. I would define them as regressive reprobates. Nothing progressive about them. They're regressive. There are people who have become more concerned in our nation with the rights of illegal immigrants with the rights of lawbreakers, they're more concerned with their rights than they are the citizens of our own country. That's amen. That's Praise God. That's the truth. Yeah, you oh. shout amen now. I don't know how much you be shouting five minutes from now, though. <laughs> That's the truth. A people who believe that the United States of America should completely do away with her borders. That's the people who have become delusional in their That's minds. Wrong. That's wrong. A people who now believe that socialism is the answer to all of America's problems. Listen, that's been tried before, folks. It's been tried all over the world, and everywhere it has been tried, it has failed. But in the delusional minds of these progressives of our own day, they say we know we can make it right. They're delusional. A people who have decided that they would rather give sanctuary to members of a brutal gang members who want to do away even with the law enforcement who has a responsibility of prosecuting and bringing those people to justice. Folks, these people with such a mindset, they have become delusional. Why? Because they have believed a lie. They have fallen prey to that dark preacher that walked across here last week. He has filled their minds with deluded opinions, thoughts, and ideas. I've seen that way for a while now. They're delusional. A people who would desire to shut down your First Amendment <coughs> rights, my First Amendment rights, the First Amendment rights of anybody that's a citizen of this country, which provides us with what? Freedom of religion. We're here this morning because we are privileged to live in a nation that has provided us with the right to come together and worship God as we please. Amen. That's right. And I'm not willing to give that up easily. But no. I love it. The First Amendment gives us our freedom of religion. It gives us freedom of speech. Yes. Freedom of speech. But see, we've got these progressive, delusional lunatics today who have decided that if they don't like what you have to say, it's their business and it's their duty and it's their responsibility to shut you up by whatever means necessary. They're going into restaurants and silencing people. Disturbing people as they try to have their lunch or their dinner. First Amendment affords us what's defined as freedom of the press. 
Listen, enough of the press has been captivated. We don't need the rest of it captivated. A bunch of hogwash. Gives us the right, the freedom to assemble. It gives us the right to petition grievances against our government. You see, in some of these countries that are run by dictators, you don't have that right. Right and if you take that right, you'll pay for it. You pay for it dearly. I get rid of you. That's what some folk want in this nation. And the devil's behind it. That dark figure's behind it. Because one of the reasons is he wants to silence this pulpit and any other pulpit in the country that's speaking the truth. You got these progressive lunatics, these progressive liberals, these progressive delusional people who want to take away your Second Amendment right to possess a firearm in order to protect your family. Oh, yeah. Now, I might add this. <coughs> All of the aforementioned, all of the aforementioned primarily exist within the ranks of one political party in this country. I'll let you figure no, out which one it is. Yep. They have been taken and held captive by that dark creature that showed up here last week. And this is one preacher that is not going to keep his mouth shut about it. If you can't see it, then you need to get on your knees and you need to pray and you need to ask God to remove the scales from your eyes. Amen. Amen. I want to say this to you this morning. People who reject the truth will eventually become delusional. See, this delusional, we're talking about a spirit, folks. It's a spirit of delusion. People who reject the truth will eventually become delusional. The first thing we need to understand is this. Unbelief. Unbelief is the sin that leads people to the captive delusional mindset. Amen. It is unbelief that drives people into a delusional state of mind. It's unbelievers who will one day be deceived by the Antichrist. Now, if you don't believe that spiritual world is real, that dark creature that was seen standing at the door last week that walked across there and walked through that door right there, he didn't open it, he just walked right on through it. That world is real, folks. And that world comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It is darkness. As a matter of fact, the unbelievers of our world, they are already deceived by the spirit of Antichrist. They're already deceived. And they are rapidly progressing. Yeah, in this sense, they're progressing. They're rapidly progressing towards the coming of the Antichrist. Their minds will be fully prepared when he gets here. That's true. The world stage is being set, folks. U.S. included. We're not going to be an exception. Stage is being set. The world, even our own nation, has become ripe for the coming of this world leader. This nation, the 
people of this nation have, have become a gullible people. And I'm not talking about just folks outside. I'm talking about folks in the church. I've never seen so much gullibility. Even with professing Christians, Gullibility. A nation filled with gullible people, especially the youth of our neighborhood. Their minds have been trained <coughs> by the delusional minds of professors in colleges, in high schools, and teachers even in elementary schools. Listen, the children and the youth of America, their minds have been, been, been prepared for years for what is coming. They're so easily led astray. I mean, you come up with any idea in the world today and you can get a follow. The Bible tells us this. I mean, you can tell folk, you get out here, you can get a crowd, you can tell folk that there's a large spaceship coming next week to pick up a bunch of folk and they'll be believing it. Folk will believe anything today, you tell them. Exactly. Except for the truth. That's right. Amen. People who are convinced that they know everything and yet they know nothing. They're like adolescent teenagers who know everything. Any of you know any teenagers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bible says that this unregenerate world is lost. It's lost. Because it hasn't heard the truth. Oh, this nation's had more truth preached to it than any nation in the world. Not because they haven't heard the truth. No, it's because they've heard the truth and they've rejected the truth in every sphere of life. Truth has been preached in this nation since it was found. I believe that our Constitution, much of it is based on the truth. And I'm going to tell you something, the early fathers of this nation and the church of this nation, in its beginning, preachers and the church had a lot to say about what went on in the government. Exactly. They didn't know anything about separation of church and state back then. Those who stand up and preach the truth today have been labeled as fanatics. Troublemaker, they'll call you. I tell you something, I'd rather, I'd rather you call me a fanatic than call me religious. You know why? Because I have a master who was pretty fanatical. He died on the cross for the sin of the world. That's pretty fanatical. We're fanatics for preaching the truth. We're fanatics for loving people with the love of God. While these delusional folks are running and rushing into restaurants to attack people who don't agree with them, they're staging violent riots claiming to be the nation's solution when in reality what they are are rebels of lawlessness. Exactly. Satanism. <clears throat> These people are lost. Why are they lost? Because they don't love nor do they appreciate nor they do they desire the truth. have no interest in the truth. They have no interest 
in the light of God's Word. Why? Because that dark figure has deluded their mind. Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? Jesus Christ is truth. The Word of God, this is truth, folks. This is the truth. You'll find the truth in the Quran. You'll find the truth in the Book of Mormon. You won't find the truth in the New World Translation of Jehovah's Witnesses. They're all lies. Those folks are delusional. Why? Because they believe the lie rather than the truth. Much of our nation and perhaps a majority of the youth in our nation today literally abhor and detest the truth. Yeah, that's the truth. Christ is not welcome in much of our nation. He's not welcome in the school system. He's not welcome in the justice system. He's not welcome in our government today. And the consequence of that is a self-imposed blindness. self-imposed blindness. It's in reality a judgment of God upon those who refuse to believe. It's a satanic deception that we're living under in this age. You and I are living in a nation that is drowning in the delusional curse of early death. There's a vivid illustration happening in our nation that's been going on for over a year and a half now, a vivid illustration of those who have been captivated by a collusion circus that has taken place in the national capital. Delusion, folks. Not a collusion, it's a delusion. It's everywhere. Let's face it. People love their sin. And when you, when I, when the government or anybody else invades their space, and begins to come against their sin, they're going to throw a tantrum. They love killing their babies. They love killing their babies. That's delusional. They love killing their babies. And the thought, just the mere thought, that a Supreme Court justice might be put on the bench who doesn't agree with their opinion that it's okay to kill a baby, they're going to do anything and everything they can to stop it. Everybody should know that. They would even go so far, I would suggest to you this morning, if they have the opportunity to assassinate it. It's a big lie and they know it. I don't know why they're pushing it money, maybe. They hate the gospel. They despise the Lord Jesus Christ. The world is guilty. Our nation is guilty. The people are guilty before God. Yeah. Why? Because they have been captivated by their own falsehood. Listen, listen to this. This is Bible. It's not preacher's opinion. Listen. Listen, let me give you some wisdom. Listen carefully. Proverbs 5 and 22 says, A wicked man's iniquities entrap him. He is entangled.
entangled in his own sin. Mm -hmm. He will die because there is no instruction and be lost because of his great stupidity. Oh my, the Bible uses such language as that. Great stupidity. That's what the spirit of delusion has created in our nation today, folks. A nation filled with stupidity. I see it and I hear it every <coughs> single day. Much of our nation today lies in a pit filled with stupidity. You, you won't hear many preachers say that this morning. But it's the truth. A pit of stupidity. And if you have spiritual eyes to see it, it ought to be very, very evident to you if you're paying attention to what's going on and you're spending time in this book. Because light exposes and drives out the darkness. Unbelief. Unbelief. Much of our nation today, folks, is living and walking in a drunken spiritual stupor of unbelief, living under the wrath and the judgment of God. Exactly. Unbelief is a sin that eventually captivates and creates delusional mind. Second thing I want us to say about it, as God's people, we can have assurance despite the delusion that surrounds us. Amen. Thank God for that. That dark creature that came through that door and went out that door last week don't bother me a bit. You know why? Because greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. Amen. If we're genuine Christians, the Bible says our security is steadfast and secure. Mm -hmm. Salvation has come to those of us who believe, hey, you're talking about progressing. No, we're the ones who are truly progressing. We're progressing in spiritual maturity and development. We are progressing towards the very image and likeness of Jesus Christ in Amen. Amen. They can have their progressiveness. I'm not interested in it. Amen. I'm only interested in the sanctified progressiveness of Jesus Christ. Yes. True. We need not fear falling under that state of illusion. Thank God. As believers, you and I are not subject to the curse any longer. The world is lost. But as we sang in Sunday school this morning, amazing grace. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost. Now I'm found. Saved by the grace of God. And did any of us deserve it? God's people have been cleansed. We continue to be cleansed. We've been set apart by God, made righteous in Christ. Salvation is the beginning of a total transformation in our lives. We're totally and completely secure in Jesus Christ. You see, we don't have to worry about that dark figure that walked across to you last week. You know why? Because God watches over His own. Amen. 
God's watching over His own. And the Bible says God will see His people through to the end. We're saved by God's grace. We're kept by God's grace. And there's no reason whatsoever that any born-again believer should ever have to live in a state of delusion. Amen. We've been here this long. As God's people, you and I can have assurance even surrounded by a state of delusion. Last, quickly this morning, God's true people must stand strong in this hour of delusion. Amen. Not a time for the church, not a time for the people of God to show weakness. Oh, it's time for us to stand. This is not a time for church. It's not a time for preachers in pulpits to be flip-flopping like politicians. I couldn't have been a politician. I'm not good enough to lie. <laughs> I wouldn't even lie to my wife because I know I'm a bad liar. If I lied to her, she'd know it 30 seconds later. I might be able to get away with it with my mother-in-law, but not with my wife. <laughs> you try no time to be tossed to and fro by every wind and no. wave of doctrine. Yeah, so. No time to be timid and fearful. Living in an hour when you and I as God's people, we need to rise to the service. Yes. The service We've got to keep our grip on the truth. Yes. The Word of God. This is the truth, folks. If you want to get full of truth, do like my first German shepherd did. Just eat it. Eat it. Eat it. That's what the angel told John to do over Revelation. He said, eat it. Then eat, eat it. Exactly. It'd be sweet in your mouth, but it'd be bitter in your tongue. I'll tell you some things I see going on in our world and going on in the church today make me bitter inside. He didn't mean the pages, he meant the meaning that was written in there. Word of God is true. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And we're unable to stand in our own strength. No, we need Jesus. Amen. Amen. We need His Spirit. We need His power. We need to be dependent upon Him. Amen. But we can't do it by ourselves. The delusion that we see in our world today, listen, it is only a sign what is yet to come. It's just a sign of what's coming. It's no time for ignorance. No time for unbelief. No time for insecurity. No time for weakness. Why? There's signs all around us that are growing daily as to what's on the horizon. It's all part of God's great plan. One day it shall be completed. I'll tell you right now, I'm not, I, a lot of folks are looking for the Antichrist. I'm not looking for, I'm looking for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm listening for the trumpet. For Amen. Titus 2 and 13, I close with it. We, speaking of believers, we wait for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say, preacher, with absolute certainty, That's right. I know Jesus Christ this morning lives in my heart. He's the Lord of my life. He's my Savior. If I drop dead before this day is over, I'll awaken in the very presence of my Lord. Amen. If you can't say that, I would encourage you to get right with God before you leave here today. Because if you leave here without Jesus Christ, that dark figure that stood at that door last week and went through that door, He'll drag you out with Him. And He'll take you with Him to His final abode. The book of Revelation says that the devil knows that His time's running out. Don't leave here this morning without Christ. You're here this morning, you can't say with certainty you know Christ, that 
You've been saved, you've been washed, you've been cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. We sing this closing hymn. I would encourage you to come up here. Let me pray with you, pray for you. You here this morning, I don't care what your need might be. If you need prayer for any reason, I would encourage you to come. Let me pray with you, pray for you as we sing this closing hymn.